This is the Celestron StarSense Explorer DX5 SCT, and I'm so excited for this telescope. Let's just open the box and put it together. Cue a time lapse. Hey everyone, John Reed here, author of 110 Things to See with the Telescope and the new Learn to Stargaze for Kids. Now, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you'll know that I've been very impressed with Celestron's new StarSense Explorer system. This is a system that uses your cell phone to guide your telescope precisely to your targets. It works by using your phone's camera to identify stars and align the telescope's position to the sky. Well, I was fortunate enough to have Celestron reach out to me and send me this, the Celestron StarSense Explorer DX5 Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope, or SCT for short, a relatively large aperture telescope that's super compact and ready for adventure. This is Learn to Stargaze. So as you can see in the intro, setting up these telescopes is relatively easy. There's just a few unique things to this telescope that are helpful to know. First, there's an Allen wrench hidden in the mount. This is for attaching the slow motion controls. I'm guessing they included this because these slow motion controls become loose over time and sometimes need to be tightened. The StarSense dock attaches like this, but it's also removable for travel. Put it on like this and remove it like this. All right, so what's in the box? Well, in addition to the telescope, tripod, and StarSense Explorer dock, we've got a 25 millimeter Plossil eyepiece offering 50 times magnification, and a 10 millimeter eyepiece offering 125 times magnification. It also includes an erect image 90 degree diagonal so that the telescope can be used for terrestrial observations as well. These are a special type of diagonal that corrects for the mirror image view inherent to this type of telescope. It also includes a red dot finder, which helps with the alignment process and lets you find objects manually if you're not using StarSense. You'll also need this unique code, which is included in the package. This code activates the StarSense app. Now let's get this telescope ready for viewing things in space. First, we'll attach the diagonal, then the finder scope, then install the 25 millimeter eyepiece. Now, before we use the telescope at night, we need to make sure that the finder and the telescope are pointed at precisely the same location. To do this, first turn the finder scope on using this knob here, then point the telescope at a distant object. I like to use a distant chimney. With the telescope centered on the chimney, move over to the finder scope. Use this knob here to move the finder up and down, and this knob here to move the finder left and right until the finder is centered on the chimney. Then move back and forth between the telescope and the finder to make sure that they're pointed at precisely the same spot. So we're outside during the December 2022 polar vortex. It's freezing out here, but we've got a lot to cover. This telescope is so adaptable. Here are three of the many ways you can customize this scope for a unique experience. This telescope can accept two inch eyepieces for truly immersive views of the sky. To do this, remove the visual back that came with the telescope, add a two inch visual back, Add a two inch diagonal, then add your two inch eyepiece of choice. This telescope can also be turned into an amazing travel scope. Just look at this. We attach the telescope to a mount from a children's Dubsonian telescope, a telescope we purchased for less than $100. Then using just two zip ties, we firmly attach the StarSense system to the dovetail bracket on the telescope. And now this telescope should fit into a backpack. I'm really excited to travel with this telescope now. SCT telescopes are known for their epic views of the planets, but how do you get a picture? Well, first you remove the eyepiece and add a designated planetary imaging camera. Record the image either on a laptop or on your phone using an ASI Air. Then share the image to impress all your friends.
All right, so it is freezing cold out here and super windy, but the skies are clear, so we're gonna do some observing with the StarSense. All right, so we've got the telescope set up. The StarSense app is open. The first thing we need to do is align the app to the sky. So we're gonna hit this button here. We're gonna hit needs alignment. If this is your first time using the StarSense app, there will be a series of videos that will walk you through this. If you need to see those videos again, just hit the help button. The first step is to center the phone over the camera. You do this on the first screen. Once that's done, you hit next. Then we need to center an object in the telescope. I'm gonna start with the finder and center a bright object. In this case, I'm gonna center Jupiter. Then we move over and just make sure it's perfectly centered in the telescope itself using the slow motion controls. Now we go over to the phone pinch in with our fingers and align that object, in this case Jupiter, precisely onto the crosshairs and hit done. And then OK. Now the StarSense system knows exactly where the telescope is pointed. All right, now let's go to our first target. Let's say I want to find Mars. I'm going to hit search, moon and planets, then Mars. Then I'm going to hit locate. I can push the telescope here with two hands, slewing it over to Mars. When StarSense turns green, move to the eyepiece and the target should be centered in the field of view. And it is. All right. Now let's try a deep sky object. If we scroll out, let's try the Pleiades. Okay, Pleiades is pretty close. I might just use the slow motion controls to, sc to scroll over there. There we go. Just like that. Star sense has turned green. Let's move over to the eyepiece. All right, wonderful. <laughs> this telescope has a little bit too much magnification for the Pleiades. We're looking right into the center of that cluster. One of the best things about Star Sense is that you don't have to realign it when you move the telescope. For example, say I want to look at Saturn. I'm going to go find Saturn in the search menu, hit locate, except Saturn is behind the neighbor's house. So if I want to see it, I need to move the telescope. So let's do that now. And I'll just narrow in on Saturn and then check the eyepiece. Wonderful, and we've got a perfect view of Saturn centered in the eyepiece. Okay, with Jupiter on the screen here, projected from the camera, I can hit record. We're just gonna take a few seconds of video because it's so windy, I'm gonna lose it. Okay, I'm gonna stop recording, and then that video I just took, I can then go and stack into an image. All right, it was way too cold to do that outside. So I'm gonna process the image in here. We're gonna to go to File Manager, then hit Planet. And this was the first file that we did, so I'm gonna do that. It's only a six second uh, video. I'm gonna hit Stack. And what the software is doing is it's turning that video, turning every frame in that video into a single image. And now I can see the image on the screen. Hey, we can zoom in. And now we can play with the sharpness here and bring out some of the details on this planet. That is looking great, isn't it, bud? Contrast. And maybe we'll bring the sharpness down here. I'm gonna save that. All right, we're back outside in the cold because one final target is above the horizon, the Orion Nebula. Okay, all right, it's green, which means it should be in the eyepiece. So the light pollution is pretty bad here. So I'm going to use inverted vision. That means looking just to the side of the target. But I can definitely see details in that nebula. Fantastic. Well, this was a lot of fun. I'm going to do some more stargazing, but I'm going to turn the camera off for now. Beautiful. Some astronomers say that telescopes like this SCT contain a little bit of pixie dust. They claim that the performance of these telescopes seem to be better than their specifications would imply. 
So last night, I compared this telescope against a well collimated Newtonian and this F10 refractor. Now with a Barlow on the Newtonian, all three of these telescopes have a focal length of F10, and all three of these telescopes have a similar light collecting area. Based on their specifications, all three of these telescopes should perform nearly identically. And you know what I found after observing both Mars and the Orion Nebula with the exact same eyepiece? Their performance was nearly identical. Now if I were to choose just one of these telescopes to take with me to a stargazing event, which one would I choose? Well, I'd choose the StarSense Explorer SET. Its compact size combined with the StarSense Explorer system make this the ideal telescope for visual astronomy in its class. Hey hun, which telescope would you choose? This one, it's so cute and tiny. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the StarSense Explorer DX5. Thanks again to Celestron for sending me this telescope and for sponsoring this video. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And remember, the future is looking up.